I'm Snoop Dogg, and I'm giving up smoke. I know what you're thinking. Snoop, smoke is kind of your whole thing. But I'm done with it. I'm done with the coughing and my clothes smelling all funky. I'm going smokeless. Solo stove, fix five. They took out the smoke. Now you can have a nice blaze without any clouds ruining your day. Go smokeless. Go to solostove.com. Tell them Big Snoop Dogg sent you. <laughs> Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... As easy as pie? Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay. Then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as... Can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's go! Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. This is a sacred moment between a boy and his father. Say what you're trying to say. What kind of weirdo are you? Jeff Lutz. And it's frustrating when you don't hear me, because I'm speaking very clearly with direct language. I can feel the love. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. It's all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. And you're invited to partake of it. Stand by for action. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hour number two, the Bob and Jeff show. I am Bob Lutz. I'm flying solo today on our eighth anniversary show. Jeff is out sick. Uh, we are joined by Martin Shetler, the head boys basketball coach at Andover, the Trojans coming off their first state title in history. Uh, they did it in thrilling fashion last year, uh, beating Highland Park in the semifinals in a, uh, an incredible game and then knocking off Cape and Mount Carmel in the championship game. Martin, welcome. How are you? Good, Bob. Thanks for having me on. You bet. We, uh, you're kind of a staple. We love talking to our, our area coaches and Andover certainly with a memorable year. Uh, how long did it take you to to come down from that high? Because not only did you win a state championship, uh, you did so with an incredible comeback in the semifinals against Highland Park, and then you beat uh, one of the legendary legendary coaches in the history of Kansas basketball in Steve Eck in the title game. Yeah, it was a pretty amazing ride. I'm not sure um... – We've, uh, we've we still kind of reminisce about it a little bit um, every day because it's a, such a such an exciting time. Um, that Highland Park game was was pretty amazing. Um, they pretty much had us beat, and we um, really didn't think we had a chance to come back. And uh, BJ Reddy kind of made it some amazing plays and brought us back into that game on defense and offense. Kind of showed up there at the end, um, and then getting a chance to play Capen, and um, it's always fun to beat Capen at the end over. Um, so it was a. It's a, a an amazing, amazing stretch, an amazing run um, with some great kids that I've uh, kind of grew up um, knowing, watching them play and get better and better all through their years. And um, it was just an amazing, amazing experience, amazing time. So um, uh, we're trying to hold on to that as long as we can, I guess, um, at least till tonight we have our first game for this year. Yeah, you play at campus uh, to open the season tonight. And your son, Eli, was such a mainstay on that team he's now at indiana state you lost three other starters from that state championship team uh so how do you how do you uh, reload how, uh, are you a legitimate uh, contender this year what has to happen for andover to be uh, anything approaching what you were last year <laughs> i don't know uh it's gonna be tough um we lost a lot There's, uh, that senior class we had last year was uh was a uh, once in a coach's lifetime um, chance to get so it's going to be tough we have a we only really have two guys that played any varsity coming back this year um, Blake Rucker's uh, going to be a big part of what we do this year he's um, going to be a little different for, for him um, and last year we had lots of guys that could score and do things and uh, this year he's going to be um, right at the top of the gathering report for other teams so it's going to be a little different for him uh, Josh Kim's coming back as a junior. He started as a sophomore last year and played a lot as a freshman. So those two are big keys that can help us do a lot of things. They have experience winning and know what it takes to do that. Um, they're good leaders and, and great basketball players. 
And then after that, it's a, it's a bunch of guys that have uh, it's kind of been waiting for their turn behind that senior class last year, and they're kind of finally getting their chance. Um, so it's just kind of a question of uh, when they figure it out and um, start playing uh, the type of basketball we want them to play. So I don't know if that's going to be tonight or if it's going to be a month from now or when it's going to be, but um, we have some talent. We have some good players. Some of them are really young and haven't had much experience, but um, – I think it'll take a little bit, but once we kind of get it figured out, I think we can get it rolling again. Uh, Martin Shetler, our guest, the head boys basketball coach at Andover. I know that uh, you've announced, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you've said this is uh, your final year coaching at Andover. Uh, You have a daughter who plays on the girls team there, Alana, who's a very good player as well. So talk about your decisions uh, to maybe make this your last year and, and going out by watching your daughter play on what is ex- expected to be a really, really good Andover girls team. Yeah, I don't know if I've uh, officially announced that yet. Um, I, I don't know. Well, yeah, I've you know, that's something I've I've been told. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been told that too. I asked a lot, a lot. Um, I've kind of thrown it out there. I don't know. It's a it's kind of a year to year decision. It's it's a. I love coaching. I love being here at Andover, and I love coaching these kids. And it's really a hard thing to um, to step away from if I if I can do that. So I, I'm not positive I'm going to, but there's a lot of things I that I, I don't want to miss. And I, my my son playing basketball at Indiana State. Um, we've got to go to a couple of his games this year, and we really enjoy going and watching him play and uh, watching that team play. And then Elena next year is going to Oral Roberts, so she'll be playing also. Um, you know, we. I, those four or five years that you get to do that is, is pretty special. And I want to be able to be a part of that. Um, and it's kind of tough being a, being a coach also. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to kind of weigh those options and see, see what I want to do. It's, it's, uh, it's tough. I mean, there's some days at practice, I walk out of there and think, yeah, I'm this, I can't do this anymore. I'd rather do other things. And then there's, there's most days I walk out there thinking, I don't know if I can not do this because this is kind of what I've always done. And, um, I mean, I don't really, that's my main hobby. I don't really do anything else. So giving it up is going to be tough if I do. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of things on the other side that, that are important to me that I want to do also. So it's kind of a, up in the air right now. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll probably wait until at the end of the season to make that decision for, for yeah. sure. But Well, I, I certainly don't mean to rush you out. You've been, done a fantastic no, job. No. And I, I've been in that state of limbo, and it's not a comfortable place to be in. So... Hopefully there's clarity for you in the in the near future, Martin. Right. Yeah. I hope so. So what what about the basketball in your league, the AVCTL? It's always a top notch league. Uh, what are you expecting in that conference this year? Yeah, um, it always is. It's tough, and it, I think there's probably more parity in our league than there has been in the in the years past. Um, Last couple of years, us and Andover Central were kind of uh, at the top of it, and um, this year it's it's way more spread out. Um, Andover Central played last night and had a tough one with May South, but they had a lot of kids that were just coming off football season and probably haven't been in the gym too much, so they're going to get a lot better. Um, Goddard looks to get a lot better. Eisenhower is always good and well coached, and um, Central has a new coach. Arc City always is always good and surprises people. Um, Valley Center is the new coach so it's kind of I'm not real sure what it's going to look like and and where everybody's at but it feels like it's a league where there's not a for sure winner this year or there's not one or two teams that can are going to walk through it this year or we know is going to be at the top I think it could be any number of three or four teams that have a chance to to win and do well Um, I think we have a good chance to be at the top of it again but uh, I think it's going to be a it's not going to be a, a team that just wins every game in the league. I think it's going to be a more of a three or four loss team has a chance to win this league this year. Well, we, we always appreciate uh, you giving us some time and coming on and talking about your team and high school basketball. Uh, best of luck tonight as you open against campus. They have one of the best players in the state, so you'll find out something about your team tonight for sure. Yes, we will. Um, yeah, they have two guys that are really tough to guard. So we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll get exposed to some things and see where we're at and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully learn some stuff and get better. Martin, thank you. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. 
Martin Shuttler, the boys basketball coach at Andover. Uh, again, the Trojans open tonight on the road at campus. And uh, we'll be talking shortly here to Tyler Keim from Wichita Independent. All right, he's here. How about that? Tyler Keim joins us, head boys basketball coach at Independent High School here, just up the road from our studios at KFH. Tyler, hello. Welcome. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're doing well. It's just me today. So I. Uh, Oh, so there's you, no okay. Jeff. You just, yeah, you just got me. It's your lucky day. You lucked, at, you uh, lucked out then today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit. You've you've done a really good job of, of kind of remaking and rebuilding, uh, this independent boys basketball program. You're highly uh, thought of going into the season. Take us inside a little bit. Tell us tell us what you like about your team. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's going to be a lot different this year. We graduated seven seniors from last year, so we're losing 95, 96% of everything from last year. We have some, uh, pretty good freshmen coming in. Uh, there's a holdover, uh, from last year. That's a senior, uh, Sarai and Dennis got two other seniors that are going to put in some minutes, Grayson Jensen and, uh, Kingston Selman. Um, but, it's it's nice to see some fresh faces, different kind of energy, um, just trying to put it put it all together. Yeah, and and last year was obviously a really good year. Just talk about the process of going to a place and trying to build uh, this kind of program, and and really some of the hurdles that you have to get over uh, to make that happen. Um, it, it, it was, it was, it wasn't too bad at first. Um, there were some kids here that, uh, really wanted to work hard and understood the things that I wanted out of them. Um, just, just from, a you know, before I got here, they weren't very good and they were down and it's just trying to, trying to boost their confidence and boost them up and trying to realize, get them to realize that they need to be in the weight room. You know, they need to eat correctly. Um, because of the style we play, we get up and down a lot. Um, and it's just trying to get kids to buy in because that's, that's, that's the hard part sometimes. Talking to high school basketball, as we do here on the show, Tata Keim, head coach at Wichita Independent, coming off a second-place finish in Class 2A last year. You mentioned uh, losing so many seniors, and that's always difficult, even for bigger schools. Uh, how much of a toll is that? at a smaller school like independent uh it's it's a little bit um like i said we have like uh we probably have four freshmen that are probably going to get some get some varsity minutes this year um they have a pretty high basketball iq they play a lot of aau basketball during the summer um we had a you know we had a little bit of a summer with them so they understand you know the things that i'm asking them to do and obviously basketball is a lot different coming from middle school to high school you're playing against 16, 17, 18 year old kids and the physicality and the speed is just so much different and the longevity of the season as well. So it's just trying to, um, you know, get them to come along with the rest of the kids. And, you know, I really think we're going to take, we might take some bumps here and there, but I really think that come into January, February, we're going to be, we're going to be tough matchup for somebody. Uh, and, and who do you open with? Do you open tonight? Yeah, we play at home tonight. We play uh, Kiowa County out of Greensburg. Uh, we uh, got a we played went there last year, and now it's their turn to come to us. All right, well, good deal. We appreciate you coming on the show today to talk about all this. Uh, best of luck as the season unfolds, and I'm I'm sure we'll get back with you at some point during the season. All right, I appreciate you very much. All right, Tata Kime, the head boys basketball coach at Independent High School here in Wichita. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll get with Joanna Chadwick, spend a little extra time with Joanna, uh, of course, from Byte Magazine, our high school insider. We just uh, completed the football season, so I want to get some of Joanna's thoughts on that. We crowned state champions uh, just last Saturday, and a lot of interesting games, a lot of interesting matchups, a lot of interesting champions. We'll talk to Joanna about uh, talk to Joanna about some football and some basketball coming up next.
KFH. Joanna Chadwick joins us from Vibe Magazine. Uh, you have a sick cat, which I hate to hear. I love pets. How, how are things at the vet? Well, that's um, I have a cat in the kennel, so we'll. I tell you what, I I don't want to be anywhere near right now. She's not very happy, so hopefully you guys won't hear the crying. Cat Stevens with a famous song by that name. Cats in the kennel. Just kidding. Hey, I just want. Thanks for laughing at that. By the way, it was really bad. By the way, Joanna, I wanted to start with you, not not necessarily about basketball. Uh, We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, I thought this was a, a, one of the most compelling high school football seasons in recent memory in our area. Now, only Cheney and Conway Springs uh, were able to get state titles, but so many had a look at it. Uh, do you agree with me that this was a really fun and enjoyable high school football season? I agree, and I think it was because we saw teams – that had to overcome something, and they did. We saw teams who regularly dominate uh, be tested. And I think that that's what we're all looking for. Now, I will be honest, as a parent uh, watching my kids play, I'll take a, you know, a blowout any day of the week just for my own stress levels. But just as sports fans, there is nothing better than seeing what Cheney was able to do this year, for example, um, to see, uh, you know, May South and Derby High go after it on the football field. I love those types of games. And I think that the more uh, teams that we have who can challenge things, the more people are going to remember how amazing high school sports is. You know, I went to a basketball game last night, and I said, I'm in the basketball gym, and it's my safe space. And I felt like, oh, I, sh- I should have rewritten that, in that if I'm at a high school, anything activity, any sport, that's where I want to be. High school football is special. I think we look at the, the big news that always comes out, and it's college, and it's the NFL, and there's so much drama uh, that is negative, but in high school sports, to me, there's so much drama every single game, and it's like the purest form of sports. Hopefully we can keep it pure. Uh, Joanna Chadwick with us from Byte Magazine. I made a comment. I had lunch today with some people you know, uh, Paul Solentrop, Scott <laughs> Pask, and Dwayne Frazier, believe it or not. And I made wow. the comment to those three gentlemen that, If I were still writing columns at the Wichita Eagle, I would consider writing this column. Cheney just had the best football season for a high school team in the state's history. Uh, Would I be insane to write that column? Well, first of all, I just taught columns to my students yesterday. And you can write whatever the hell you want to write, Bob. Uh, But, boy, (laughs) it would be fun for you to research that and find out where this does fall. Because you have to look at that and say, I mean, it's got to be in with one of the best. I mean, to and Andale plays a huge part in that. I think that if they don't have the games that they had against Andale, you know, right. the, the beauty of their season is not quite so magical. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, what a great season. It, it, storybook is really what it is. Yeah, they ended a fifty game, fifty seven game winning streak by Andale by coming back from twenty two to nothing down. <laughs> then they got them again in the state semifinals. They got down twenty four to nothing, and they came back and beat them again. I just uh, I, that's a movie script in my opinion. It really is. And Bob, you've seen so many football games in your time, and I just really feel like. You know, you, your research, you, that was one of the, my favorite things about you when you did write a column is you were always going to have such good research. I would love for you to be able to go back and, and check that out and really, you know, rank your top ten. I think you should do that. Oh, my God. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get into some high school basketball because we've been talking to coaches all week, so my appetite has been whetted for high school basketball. And it looks like, Joanna, we've got really good high school basketball in our area, too. You know how I want to keep this up at a, at a high level. I'm pretty excited about the, the high level of high school basketball in the Wichita area. 
Well, you should be very excited for it. And I think that uh, last night I got a glimpse of it when I got to see, I was out at Andover Central for May South and Andover Central. And you look at, it was really fun to watch the Andover Central boys who, you know, they've had like four practices and after the football season and there they are out there. Um, you know, they stuck with May South. May South is an excellent team. I mean, they've got some of that top talent uh, with Tori Homan, Michael Cates, uh, Jaron Askren, and then you look at Sam Kemp, who is a phenomenal scorer. He transfers over from from Valley Center, and they have got to be the team to be in the area. Uh, well, one of them anyway. There's so many good teams. And what I love about that first game is watching all the different players show up. Is that, you know, there's the Andover girls in attendance to watch the game. And they've got two studs in uh, Shetler and Walker. And then you see the boys start coming in. And there's TJ Williams from Heights. And there's the entire Derby team. And there's um, Capen. And there's Collegiate. There's a lot of talent out there, Bob. And I think that fans really need to get out there and start watching some of this basketball. And I don't think that you should stick to just one team. I think that you really should make an effort to see as many of these teams as you can because there really are such good players. The May South girls, they were already strong. And then they bring in, they get a couple transfers from Eureka, the Singatays. They're very talented. So it's going to be an interesting season, boys and girls. Joanna Chadwick joining us from Vibe Magazine. We're talking high school basketball. We had Joe Auer on the show yesterday. We've gotten to the point now where we almost take heights for granted. We know they're going to be good year in and year out. We, In fact, we can place a pretty strong bet that they're going to be in the state championship conversation. What, uh, what do you think Joe's formula is to keep that program at such a high level? Well, anybody who has ever seen Coach Our coach, that is one intense man. He's highly intense. It doesn't matter uh, at what point of the game it is. And he loves that game. And he's always had a good set of coaches that goes along with it. They build the program from young to old, um, you know, from all the way through all four years, not just those last couple years. Uh, in their program, you can come in and play at a young age, but boy, they're sure going to groom you to come in and maybe you don't play till your junior or senior year, which allows that program to have depth. And, um, you know, they're also a proven winner. And when you're a proven winner, people want to play for you. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I want to ask you about a few more things as it pertains to high school basketball. Uh, of course, you teach journalism at Derby and have now for – how many years, Joanna? My goodness. Eight I'm, years. So you I know what? Oh, my God. Congratulations God. on your eight-year anniversary. Yeah, that seems like forever. It seems like we've been doing this show forever. Uh, awesome. So eight years down in Derby. Uh, it, Brett Flory has built this program at Derby methodically, slowly. It seems like they get better every year. Uh, he's, he's done a fantastic job. They were in the uh, semifinals of the 6A state tournament last year. Uh, there's, I still think this is an ascending program. Do you agree? Boy, I mean, that's what we hope to have it be. You know, my kids have played in this program, and we've been a part of that growth. To me, last year was my favorite year of watching my kids play. And, um, and over the eight years during that period of time. And I, I love watching Brian Mockby. He's one of my favorite people. I love watching him play his senior year when he transferred over uh, from Goddard. Uh, that would have been, I think, 2016-17, maybe 2017-18. But uh, last year, that team was exactly what you want out of a group of players, where they had a team of guys who genuinely good dudes, who liked each other, strong leadership, and they busted their butt. It wasn't about, you know, a lot of times with, with guys, you can kind of see they just, they want to look good. They want the highlight reel. Derby just wanted to win last year. And they didn't win every game. But, boy, it sure prepared them for some incredible wins at Washburn Rural in the four overtimes and then in the uh, third place overtime game as well. I like what they have this year. Dallas Metzger is a three-pointer waiting to happen. I mean, he is money from three-point range. And they've also got Caden Franklin inside and some other guys who can score. So I'm, I'm excited for what they have. 
and and what they can do. And I, you know, Flory's just a good dude. All right, a couple more I want to get in. Cape and Mount Carmel boys, they've been on the cusp. Uh, Steve Eck now 44-4 and four, uh, since returning to Capen. Uh, it looks like they've got another really, really good team. Uh, what do you give – what kind of chance do you give Capen in 5A? Well, 5A in the area is so tough. 5A – I mean, there's stars in 5A in the area. There's excellent teams, and Capen has got to be right up there. Uh, they have such good players. Um, and I, you know, whether it's Fang Ball, Corbin Johnson, I swear, I don't, I don't know if Corbin Johnson misses. I mean, I know he does, but he is a phenomenal scorer. And they have, they have such depth on that team. And not just in, you know, they have youth and they have veterans as well. So, I mean, I think that they are definitely going to be one of the teams to watch. And then before we let you go, I do want to ask you about City League girls basketball because we've kind of forgotten it. Uh, a little bit over the past several years. But now you've got a situation where we know Bishop Carroll is a very good team. Uh, You've got Wichita Southeast, you've got Wichita South, and you have Kip Pulliam back at Wichita Heights. I'm really intrigued by what the City League is going to give us in girls basketball this year. Well, and I think you should be because there is a lot of talents. I see that Zion Butler just committed to uh, Butler, and that's obviously an excellent, excellent women's program, of course, coached by Mike Helmer, who we all love. Uh, But if you look at Bishop Carroll year in and year out, they just are there. They are a tough team to beat. And uh, Southeast getting to state last year. But Heights, to me, is where we need to be really watching because – Kip manages to get uh, a lot of really good players to want to play for him, and he's got a lot of talent over there. And so it's going to be really interesting seeing him come back. I just think that that's – it was one of those moments like, no way, Kip is back. So it's very interesting. Obviously, he had a lot of success before. So I think you definitely should be watching City League girls basketball. Yeah, and we haven't said that a whole lot in the past decade or so. So – uh, that's been built back up, and we're looking forward to it. Joanna, thanks. We always appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Bob. All right. There goes Joanna Chadwick. Coach Steve Eck joins us on the IHOP Hotline, the head boys basketball coach at Cape and Mount Carmel. They open their 2023-24 season tonight at North High. Coach Eck, hello. Welcome. How you doing, Bob? You know, I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. How about you? I'm all right. Just on the way to the freshman game. Well, as as you should be. Freshmen are just as important as the seniors. <laughs> so in, in the future, you're they coming are. off. There you go. You're coming off another really good year. Uh, Cape and expected to have yet another good year. Ranked number two by some of the preseason polls. Uh, what are you expecting of your team this season? Well, uh, we're going to be young and we're going to be short. I don't have one Ansel, Ansel anymore. That 6'7 guy that went to K-State tied in. So we're going to miss him, and we, we graduated five seniors. So we're going to be young to start off with, and we only had four days of practice with the football team. So we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, that could be a good or a bad thing with the football team. That means they're in shape, right? That's what you've told others uh, regarding high school football players. Not not basketball shape, but that's all right. All right. Well, you do have you do have three uh, players coming back that I know uh, you you feel good about. Uh, what uh, you've got uh, Will Thingval and Corbin Johnson, and then uh, what's Charles? What's the, what's that kid's first name? Tegan Charles, and also got Brooks Powers, yeah. too. Oh, there you go. So you do have some some firepower on your team. Uh, of those guys, uh, what are you expecting? Uh, some leadership and, uh, and uh, well, put some, you know, play some defense, and uh, they're my four, uh, re- you know, returning guys, and basically leadership and uh, hitting a few baskets. Do you have a clock near you in your in your car? No, I'm turning my left side. Turn signal. 
It's not oh, turn there signal. You go. Sorry. That's okay. I, I pick up on sounds like that. So you've been you've been coaching basketball a long time. Uh, you started at the junior high school level. You certainly had your uh, years at Wichita South that resulted in six state titles. You went into the junior college ranks. You spent uh, a couple years as a Division One assistant. You've had success everywhere you've been. Uh, one year at UMKC. What is it that uh, keeps you keeps you going? Because you're my age, which means you're not a spring chicken. Uh, what keeps you no. going the way you go? Uh, being around the kids, uh, enjoying it. Uh, try to stay young in, in, your, in your mind. I mean, I know what age is, age is old, but just try to stay young and stay healthy and uh, do, it, do it for the kids. If you're, if you're coaching for yourself, you're in the wrong business. That's uh, that's true. Are you are you successful in that, staying young in your mind? Because I try to do the same thing, and some days I feel like I'm having more luck at that than than others. <laughs> I understand, uh, but when you're around when you're around these guys, are you know, uh, they're goofy enough to keep you young. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so you 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 mentioned the the players that you do have back and. Will Thingval as uh, as has certainly was a key part of your team last year, as was Corbin Johnson. How do you look at uh, the rest of the city league? Do you think uh, do you think the city league's on an upswing or not? Yes, it, it is on an upswing. Uh, you got Heights at the top. Uh, they've got. I mean, this is my third year, and they've had the most talent all three years. Uh, we up. There I go too close to it. Uh, Heights at top. We've been been lucky to to get them all, you know, both years. And uh, then you got other teams. I mean, south, southeast, west. I mean, I north. There's a lot of teams that are getting better and better. They were Mr. Carroll. They were young. The last first two years I was at, at Capen. Now they're all seniors. And so I think there's gonna be uptick this year in the city leagues for sure. Steve Eck, our guest, head boys basketball coach at Cape and Mount Carmel. And, and when you coached at South previously, from, I believe, 1986 through 1995, 10 years, uh, the league was, was outstanding. A lot of really good head coaches. Uh, where does Joe Auer rank amongst the, the guys, the coaches you've worked against in your time as a head coach? I mean, he's, he's longevity is, 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 is the best thing you can say about it. I mean, he's been here for a long time. But uh, I only coached against him, I think, a couple times when I was at South. Uh, and then I went to junior college, and he, he was assistant for uh, Coach Dowdy for those years, and he's become the head coach. So he does a good job. I mean, he, he has players every year, and, he, and it's one thing to have players. It's another thing to be able to, to coach them. And you know how fondly I remember those years uh, when you coached at South and, and the players you coached. I was happy to get to cover high school basketball for about half of your tenure at South before I went and did some other things. How, uh, how close uh, in touch are you with some of those great players that you coached? Val Barnes, Steve Woodbury, oh. Johnny Murdoch, uh, the Williams brothers. Oh. So, many, so many fantastic players that you had. Uh, but sometimes day, daily, uh, day by day. I mean, you know, I hear from them all the time. I talk to them, and they talk. They call me and, or text me or whatever. And uh, it was those good days. And, and uh, those players were very loyal, and, and they were uh, good people, and they turned out to be a good fathers and, and husbands. And uh, so, it, you know, I talk to them constantly. Well, that uh, would be obviously one of the most gratifying parts of coaching and uh, you're getting ready for another season it starts tonight at north high how excited do you get coach Eck, uh, for the start of a new season especially someone like you who's done this for so long uh i'd be well you probably won't believe me but i don't get real excited about it i just get focused for it i'm not, not really like excitable person more so, I just get focused for the season and then and, and, uh, take it game by game. Well, I think I know you well enough to not be surprised by that answer. Okay. <laughs> 
Well, good luck. Uh, we look forward to it. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a really good high school basketball season. Certainly you and your team at Capon are going to uh, most likely pay a, play a big part in that, and it gets started tonight. Thanks for coming on with us. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Keep taking that predisol. Right. What's that? Keep taking that predisol. Yeah, you yeah. Let's helmet. not share my... Let's not share my family secrets, okay? Okay. <laughs> Steve Eck, right, our guest, as uh, see ya, Coach Eck, uh, a long time and legendary coach. I happen to think probably uh, the finest high school coach uh, that we've ever seen here in the City League. And I think that was borne out from the success he had at South, where in 10 years he won 227 games and lost 15. Yeah, let that soak in for a minute. All right, we have uh, sort of come toward the end of uh, Friday show, our eighth anniversary show. Too bad that Jeff couldn't be here today. I do want to thank him. Uh, without him, this would not be called the Bob and Jeff show. There, that's how's that for a compliment? Uh, also, to our friend Jason Duda, who fills in periodically and sometimes more than periodically, He's filled uh, in on this show admirably and been a huge part of uh, the Bob and Jeff show. And to our friend Max Power, our producer and engineer, back in the studio who's there almost each and every day. He is the, uh, he answers the bell, Max Power. And then to Tom Thurber, our first producer and engineer. And, of course, I'd be remiss not to mention KFH program director Tony Dusing, who gave us this opportunity uh, back in 2015. Uh, I don't know how he felt about it. I've certainly done my share of radio in this market. Uh, to, to bring in a father and a son to do a radio show, I don't know that anybody could have predicted what it was going to look like, what it was going to sound like. Uh, but it is what it is. Jeff and I have a good time doing the show. We have a relationship, maybe that's not like every father and son, but every father and son have their own relationship and ours fortunately works on many levels including the level of being able to do a daily radio show in Wichita for the past eight years. Uh, we'll try to get it to nine. That's the best we can promise you. That endeavor will begin next Monday when we return the Bob and Jeff show KFH radio. Thanks for listening everyone. We'll see you Monday. Ah, the satisfying sounds of more sales in your business. And from the sound of it, your business is growing. But you shouldn't have to pay more to scale your business. With Stamps.com, you can import orders from wherever you sell online, find the lowest rates with the fastest delivery times, and instantly deliver tracking updates to your customers and stock up on supplies. Get started at Stamps.com today with code PROGRAM for a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale.